Hey everyone, I hope all is going well for you. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of Organizational Behavior Hack. So today, our goal is to understand the importance of leadership in organizations. While it's certainly important to have motivated employees, the leaders who oversee them also have a substantial impact on the effectiveness of organizations. To understand this principle, we need to comprehend two things. First, the difference between managers and leaders. And second, we need to comprehend the various theories of leadership along with their pros and cons. When we compare and contrast managers and leaders, we need to be careful since these individuals may exhibit similar traits. For instance, a manager may try to lead others. A foreman in a factory will do all he or she can to lead the team to reach their potential in terms of productivity. Also, a leader like a CEO has to manage priorities, their schedule, direct reports, and the overall functioning of the organization. So, good managers are great leaders, and outstanding leaders are also adept at management. But there are some differences, and we need to be aware of how managers and leaders are distinct. In 2013, Vinet Nayar wrote a short article in the Harvard Business Review. He mentioned that a young manager told him that he was reading up on leadership and trying to lead his team at work. The young man wondered, how will I know when I've crossed over from being a manager to a leader? Nayar noted that he didn't really have an answer to this question at the time, so after some reflection he came up with three differences. First, managers count things, how many employees are working, if they are meeting productivity numbers, if they are profitable this quarter. In contrast, leaders count value. This means that they are looking at differences that they, the employees, or the organization are making. Second, managers may be able to influence the people that directly report to them. Leaders, on the other hand, may be able to impact many people because of their perceived or actual power. Finally, Managers control a group of people to obtain outcomes. Leaders are able to motivate others to work towards organizational goals. Here's a list of other key attributes of managers and leaders, and please bear with me because it's a little bit long. Managers have a position and exercise authority based on that role. Leaders instead develop power for themselves and for others. Managers have people that report to them. Leaders act in such a way that people want to follow them. Managers try to control what others do. Leaders, by contrast, inspire through trust and confidence. Managers look at the short term. They have their eye on the bottom line. Leaders look at the future and have their eye on the horizon. What's next? Managers implement a plan like a good soldier whereas leaders create the vision they come up with in the first place. Managers accept the status quo or react to change. Leaders are not satisfied with the status quo and therefore desire to promote change. Managers try to bring order to an organization. Leaders invent new ways of doing things. They innovate. Managers focus on systems. Leaders focus on people. Managers do things right. Their processes are flawless. Leaders do the right thing for the organization, even if that's not easy or popular. Managers want to shine for their efforts. Leaders want others to shine. There are some other differences that are not mentioned on the slide. Managers ask how and when, and leaders ask what and why. A manager is a copy. He or she does what is expected of him or her. A leader is original. There is no one quite like that person. The whole point of this list is to help us see the unique characteristics of leaders so we may adopt those for ourselves and to have an impact on the organization. As we pursue the admirable qualities of leaders, we should be aware of the different types of leaders that exist. I'll mention four here. Transactional leadership, situational leadership, transformative leadership, and servant leadership. Let's explore each one with some examples. 
Transactional leadership is based on a manager's expectations of performance, which then results in benefits for employees if they meet goals and objectives. This perspective was promoted initially by Max Weber in 1947 in his explanation of rational authority. Under this type of leadership, goals are clearly articulated and measured. If success occurs, then the manager will give employees what they want, whether it is a bonus, a raise, or a promotion. A drawback of transactional leadership is that the goals are not open to change. Personal initiative is not developed internally because rewards are extrinsic instead of intrinsic. However, one of the great things about this leadership style is that things are very clear. There's no confusion about what should be done and the benefits that people will receive if objectives are accomplished. So when circumstances are straightforward, this type of leadership is definitely appropriate. But what happens when the goals of an organization or the way to accomplish them are not so clear-cut? This brings up situational leadership. This model was proposed by Paul Hersey in 1969. Situational leadership is basically allowing flexibility in order to tailor the approach based on the unique needs of the individuals or teams involved in the organization. The significant benefit of this type of leadership is that it can be adapted to specific circumstances. A potential problem is that frequent changes in approach can lead to confusion about how an organization is to operate. A third style is transformative leadership. Transformative leadership was introduced by James McGregor Burns in the 1970s. Transformative leadership concentrates a great deal on creating challenging goals and then implementing that vision through culture change and collaboration with employees. The perspective concentrates on questioning the current approach, allowing for innovation, listening, articulating goals, motivating, modeling behavior, and providing intrinsic rewards. The benefit of transformative leadership is that it helps an organization meet not only current goals, but anticipate and pursue long-term objectives. A potential problem is that employees can become emotionally exhausted from constant change and turnover could occur. A final type of leadership is known as servant leadership. This perspective was promoted by Robert Greenleaf in 1970. Servant leadership is a philosophy that puts emphasis on the well-being of employees in an organization. The theory assumes that if leaders can take care of workers, then employees will be in a better position or more likely to fulfill their obligations to the organization. The strength of this approach is that it eliminates roadblocks and processes and facilitates buy-in of goals and methods to accomplish them. One of the weaknesses of servant leadership is that employees may assume that the world revolves around them and the organization is of secondary importance. The types of leadership I mentioned might be a little bit abstract, so let me provide some real-world examples when I served as dean. When I took over the college, our provost mentioned that he was very concerned about the aviation department. Enrollment was declining and revenue was falling. If trends continued, the program would likely not survive. I could have simply said to my employees, you must do X, Y, and Z. If you do that, you get to keep your job and earn a paycheck. Conversely, if you don't fulfill objectives, I'll have to let you go. This could have worked in a situation where there was a culture that did not manifest frustration. However, in this case, there was a lot of consternation due to constant changes in leadership and the lack of vision. If I would have tried this approach, it would have gone over like a lead balloon. The employees would have revolted and I would be the one without a job. This brings up situational leadership. The unique cultural context of the aviation department required that I implement a different approach to leadership. I had to get to know people as friends, not just coworkers or employees. I had to listen to find out what the problems were and seek solutions from the employees who understood the challenges the best. I had to focus less on performance initially and more on changing culture. As I gained their trust, which took some time, the problems really started to resolve themselves. In essence, the palpable grievances required that I demonstrate soft skills 
rather than exercise my power as a dictator. As I listened to employees in aviation, one problem became clear. The turnover of our flight instructors was very harmful to the organization. If we did not have flight instructors, students could not advance their training. In addition, if we were not flying, we could not pay for aircraft. We started to look for options on how to retain our flight instructors. We knew we had to increase their pay so they would not look for employment elsewhere. But beyond that, we had to find other incentives to make them as effective as possible. This may sound like transactional leadership, but our so solution was actually transformative. Let me explain why. We decided that we would implement a new policy that would give a bonus to flight instructors if their students passed their check ride on their first attempt through an independent party. This was not something that had ever been tried at our university, and my supervisors and human resources were very leery of the proposed change in policy. We were able to convince them, and this helped us to retain our flight instructors far better than we had in the past. The change also improved our students' performance. Furthermore, as a result, our flight hours increased and we brought in more revenue. In a few years, we were able to purchase 21 new aircraft. I believe our innovation with the bonus program saved the department and helped us to advance our goals for the organization. Here is a final example that relates to servant leadership. One of my employees came to me and stated that our airframe and power plant mechanics were not as productive as they could be. He mentioned that there were inefficiencies in the layout of the hangar. Mechanics would have to leave the hangar and go inside to an adjacent building to obtain the parts they needed to maintain the aircraft. My employee mentioned that we could fix this by cutting a hole in the wall in the hangar so employees could request and obtain the parts more quickly. We made the change to the building and we also provided some food to our mechanics periodically. Taking care of them and their needs increased our ability to maintain our aircraft in a more cost-effective manner. Now, let me come back to transactional leadership. Initially, I rejected this approach. I could tell based on my situational awareness that sticks would not work at first. I was very concerned about increasing frustration when the organization had already experienced a lot of trauma throughout its history. However, as we started to resolve some of the cultural, procedural, and structural barriers, we could now begin to focus more on results. We started to review performance numbers closely each month, flight hours, check rides passed, maintenance rates, cost of fuel, and many other factors. At this point, we were in a better position to counsel employees or thank them for a job well done. My leadership had come full circle to more of a transactional approach. I should note that this sequence may not work in other organizations. Each business or government agency is different. Nonetheless, I hope this case enabled you to see when and where and how each model could be applicable and useful. To conclude, let me state that leaders and managers share some similarities, but there's also significant differences. Leaders should know when to implement transactional, situational, servant, and transformative leadership styles to help their organizations succeed. As I mentioned, I really appreciate you tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you've learned a few things along the way. Please give a like if that was the case and have a great day.